Hey everybody, this is Justin with the Millennial Mixtape, and today I've got a review of Phoebe Bridger's latest full-length album, Punisher. Now, I've been waiting for this album for a while, and I'm excited that it's finally here. It's actually here a day early, but hey, that's not too bad. If you're excited about it, let me know in the comments. Let's get started. Now, Punisher is Phoebe's second standalone album. It's coming three years after 2017's Stranger in the Alps. She has appeared on a few other albums, though, in the in-between. She was on the Boy Genius EP, which is stellar. Go check that out if you haven't. She also partnered up with Connor Oberst on Better Oblivion Community Center, and she's popped up on a few other albums uh, as a collaborator. So she was on several songs from the 1975's Notes on a Conditional Form, and if you're interested in my review on that, I will put it over here. So she's been popping up here and there, but this is the first solo Phoebe Bridgers project uh, since that album. As I mentioned, she surprised dropped this album a day early. So it was originally supposed to release on June 19th, it came out on June 18th. I think I read somewhere that it was to kind of offset the fact that people were receiving the physical versions of the album early, but it's such a nice little change of pace because with the COVID-19 thing that's going on, all of these different artists have been pushing back their albums. Declan McKenna, Haim, the Dixie Chicks, Oliver Tree. So all of these different artists and groups are pushing their albums back, but Phoebe was like, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and put this thing out there. I'm really glad that she did. So this album feels more personal than Stranger in the Alps. On both albums, there's a sense of moving through pain and sorrow and overcoming it, but there's more teeth here on Punisher than I recall there being on Stranger in the Alps. So with the exception of Motion Sickness, which I mean was just a knockout track, that one was kind of a pointed attack on Ryan Adams and the kind of psychological abuse and harassment that Phoebe faced from him. Outside of that one track, most of Stranger in the Alps kind of had this sort of, oh shucks, woe is me, how did I get in this mess quality that was kind of bundled in this naivete. Whereas Punisher, Phoebe's lyrical content has, has grown and it's more introspective than on previous works. It shifts from that naivete to, oh shucks, woe is me, how do I get out of this? So instead of how do I get in this mess, what am I going to do to change it? Again, like it's it's different because Phoebe has this moodiness and this thoughtfulness. So not only is it how do I get out of this, but the narrator of the songs, right? Phoebe has to look at the choices that have she's made to get to that point. So it's kind of like I got what I asked for, but this is in no way what I wanted. The maturity in her lyrics could probably be attributed to all of her widespread collaborations that she's been doing. She's been partnering up with some fantastic songwriters. And so from there, she's probably taken tips and clues and things like that. And it's really kind of allowed her to sharpen those songwriting skills. You feel the choices that the narrators made, even if you don't know what the choices are themselves. This idea of feeling stuck and unable to break from the routine or break yourself from these expectations that you have. And so some standout examples of this would be songs like Halloween, Kyoto, Savior Complex. They're really great examples of being stuck in the choices that we've made. And there's also quite a bit of focus on murder. So something to keep in mind, right? If you're looking for something light this summer, I want to focus on the song Chinese Satellite for a second. This one in particular was poignant for me. So as someone who's growing up in the Bible Belt, I feel like the content that she's dealing with this kind of focus on religion and religiosity and wanting to believe in something bigger than ourselves, but identifying death as being the end and there's nothing else. It kind of resonated with me a lot. Just to speak on the song, outside of the lyrical content, the instrumentation is great. The percussion sounds different than any other track she's really put out to date. It's kind of raucous and builds into this chaotic kind of, it's still syncopated, there's still rhythm to it, but it kind of shifts the balance of the song but it still blends into the tapestry of everything that's going in very well. But, but again, so to focus on the lyrical content, there's this resonance with me because being raised in the South, you have this expectation to believe in God and this higher power and have a belief system of the afterlife and the choices we make affect the things we do, which is bad theology. That is bad theology. But 
you know, there's a little room to doubt or to question or to find ways to reaffirm your beliefs. So the line in the first chorus took a tour to see the stars, but they weren't out tonight. So I wished hard on a Chinese satellite. I want to believe it just rings so true for me. You know, when you're, you're looking for something to believe in, something that's concrete and you don't see it or feel it, like you kind of take the closest approximation to that and the closest thing that's real and you just hold on to it and you just wait and see and so it just really kind of hits that point on the head and i read somewhere that phoebe's family is religious and that this is kind of an answer to that and if that's true then cool but otherwise there's something about this particular song written this way with phoebe's combination of having this haunting beautiful melody like it just it just worked so well for me so i think that Chinese Satellite is definitely my favorite track on the album. If there is one thing that Phoebe has perfected through her songwriting in these several years of being kind of in the spotlight, it's it's her long form storytelling over the music. The softness of her voice, the limited instrumentation on songs like Moon Song has a way of lulling and hypnotizing you. It's kind of like the sonic equivalent of leaving work and then you blink and realize that you're back home and you have no idea how you got there. I love the way she addresses longing and love in particular with Moon Song. So there's someone that doesn't want you, but you're just so impassionately in love with them. There's this analogy of a dog bringing a dead bird to his owner and the dog or the narrator is proud of the gift, but the owner is, you know, the object of the narrator's desire is disgusted by it. It's just such a creative way to tackle this idea of longing and separation from someone that you are wanting to be with. Production wise, this album is solid. I feel like everything is very intentional. No notes are wasted and yet, it doesn't feel sparse anywhere in between. How Phoebe constructs these songs, that style works very well for her. There are interesting textures with the use of horns on several tracks, strings will pop every now and then. And I think there was a clarinet somewhere in there, but yeah, there's a clarinet thrown in there somewhere. But she, she takes some leaps with this project that she's probably been emboldened to do from having done these other projects on the side. But this album, even with all of those different experiences and how she's maybe molded that into the sound of this album, still sounds like it is solely a Phoebe Bridgers project. Until you get to the last track, it's called I Know The End, and it starts as this quaint little poetic ditty about desolation and isolation because we need heavy content right now. And even though the narrator is with someone, they want to wall themselves off from that person. So there's callbacks to the theme of being unhappy with your choices and getting what you wanted but not what you asked for. As the song progresses, the last chorus hits this like bombastic, screamy, raucous loudness that's the biggest departure musically on the album. The song is about the end of a relationship, but it feels like the end of the world. Like it's kind of the opposite of the T.S. Eliot quote, this is the way the world ends, not with a bang, but with a whimper. Like it's a complete departure from that idea. And somehow, still, it doesn't feel out of place on a Phoebe Bridgers album. Like, I don't know if that's just because of the huge crush I have on Phoebe Bridgers' music, on her music. Um, you know, probably, but maybe not, but probably. Overall, this is a phenomenal piece of work from Phoebe. It's definitely not a sophomore slump. Are we going up or just going down? She's honed in on her songwriting choices to produce something that is deliberate and littered with personal references, but still contextually familiar to anyone with a tendency to make poor choices. So, everyone. The production is solid from start to finish. Again, there's not one note wasted. I, I can't wait to listen to it again. For Phoebe Bridger's Punisher, I'm going to give it a five out of five. It's great stuff, it's really good. All right, so that's the review. I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think of Punisher or of the review in the comments below. If you liked today's content, be sure and hit the like button. If you loved it, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you're notified of every video I put out. Over here is a video that you might like, and that's it for me. Again, I'm Justin with The Millennial Mixtape. I'll see you in the next one, and until I see you, stay safe, stay well.